Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. He said, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. We are looking at the blessing maketh, the theme of the blessing Sunday this morning, the blessing maketh. Our objective is to understand first the blessing and number two, to understand access to the blessing. The blessing of God to the minds of many is not clear. Many talk about the blessing. Many even tell people, the Lord bless you. But many don't understand what the blessing is. And even for those who understand or think they understand what the blessing is, many don't understand what to do to arrive at the blessing. But what is the blessing about? Before I define it in terms, let's understand three things about the blessing from the scripture. Number one, the blessing is behind the making of the blessed. God made men and women a blessing made people. It's behind the making of the blessed. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh. To be made into anything God wants you to be made into on earth takes the blessing. And the absence of the blessing is behind the unmaking of the unblessed. The absence of the blessing is behind the unmaking of the unblessed. Secondly, the blessing is the magnet of supernatural supplies. It maketh rich. The blessing is a connector to divine resources. It's, a, it's a, a magnet of supernatural supplies, a connector to divine resources. Whatever is available with God is collectible by the blessing. Whatever is available with God is collectible by the blessing. Finally, the blessing is cure for frustration. It's cure for frustration. It maketh rich, addeth no sorrow. It's cure for the life of dissatisfaction. That is what we are here to connect this morning. Having said that, all that about the blessing, how will I define the blessing? So the blessing is behind the making of the blessed. Is the magnet of supernatural supplies, connects us with divine resources. And is the escape way from the life of frustration. Just the same way that the curse is reason for a lifetime of frustration. The blessing gives you escape from frustration. You know a cursed person because of the abundance of frustration. You know a blessed person because of escape from frustration. What then is the blessing by definition? I have three of them this morning and I'll define one per service. Number one, 
The blessing is enjoying or the enjoyment of the fullness of the goodness of God in a world filled with the wickedness of the enemy. The blessing equals enjoying the fullness of the goodness of God. In the world filled with the wickedness of the enemy. That is when a person is blessed. He is connected or she is connected to the fullness of the goodness of God. In a world that is filled with the wickedness of the enemy. One way to identify a blessed person is that when you see them, consciously or unconsciously, you are tempted to say, God is good. And one way to identify a cursed person is when you see them consciously or unconsciously, you may be tempted to say, the devil is wicked. The de this devil is bad. Hallelujah. The fullness of the goodness of God. Now, in Genesis chapter 24 verse 1, you saw how the, the Lord Abraham was old. He was well stricken in age. And the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. The fullness of the goodness of God. Everything, everything. Fullness. Your health is working. Your business is working. Your marriage is working. Your family is working. Your mind is working. All things. The fullness of the goodness of God. And that is where somebody is stepping into this morning. If you believe that, say it loud, amen. So the blessing is far beyond the possession of money. Because there are people with money who also have curses. It's beyond the possession of money. There are rich people that are cursed. They have money but they are not well. They have money but they, are not, they can't sleep at night. They have money but something is pursuing them. That will never be your portion. So what is the path of the blessing? If I want to enjoy the fullness of the goodness of God in a world that is filled with the wickedness of the devil, what is the path? Let me ask the question, what brings the blessing? What brings the blessing? Number one is purpose. Purpose for living. Purpose for living brings the blessing. The blessing of God travels in the direction of the purpose, plan, and will of God. And God made man in his image. After his likeness. And God blessed them. And said be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. He was defining man's purpose. And inside that purpose. Is the blessing. Am I communicating? In 
I'm going to say almost the same thing, but I'll use different examples in different services. Abraham is our example in this service. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 5, God said to Abraham, Get thee out of your country, from your kindred, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you, curse him that curse thee, and in thee shall all the family of the, families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed. God defined Abraham's purpose, defined his place. I want to do something great with you. I want to make you great. I want to cause you to be a progenitor of generations. Abraham departed. And he went to the place where God asked him to go. And in that place where God asked him to go, in that place he couldn't escape the blessing. Genesis chapter 13 and in verse 2. After Abraham had arrived where God asked him to go, Abraham was very rich in cattle, rich in silver, and rich in gold. By the blessing The right place and the right purpose will attract to man's life the right results. If you want to see the right results with God, you must identify the right place and the right purpose where God will cause the results to happen. If, for example, my purpose in life is to go into the world of business and conquer the resources in that world of business for the glory of God, for the benefit of the kingdom, and for the enhancement of humanity, and I decided that in Nigeria, politics is what to do, where you can get free money or cheap money or whatever it is. And I set myself into a purpose that is not God's purpose for my life. It is impossible to see the blessing there. Am I communicating at all? Because people are asking God to bless them in the wrong agenda. In the wrong assignment. People take themselves into what God did not send them into. And they are asking God to bless them on what God has no hand in. Somebody carries himself and makes himself a pastor. Maybe because all his friends are pastors. Or maybe because somebody prophesied him into pastoral ministry. And then he's there struggling from till kingdom come. And he's wondering why he has been pastoring five people for 15 years. God will never bless what he has not commanded. God will never bless what he has not directed. If you want your life to effortlessly swim in the blessing of God, identify purpose, identify his plan, identify his will for your life, and you don't have to beg for the blessing. He told Elijah to go to the widow of Zarephath, Go to the, to, the, to the widow of Zarephath. They say, I've commanded the land of Zarephath. I've commanded the widow to dare sustain you. Just be where I want you to be, doing what I want you to do. You don't need to beg and pray. For what I will do for you. This month, there is someone here who will receive clarity of direction, clarity of purpose, and clarity in assignment. If you are that one, you will say the loudest, Amen. If you are that one, you will say the loudest, Amen. Now, apart from the fact, and, and I want to say a very serious thing, apart from the fact that doing the purpose and will of God attracts the blessing, going against the purpose and plan of God does not only forbid the blessing, it may attract calamity. 
And that's a very serious one, isn't it? That is, apart from the fact that if you don't follow the will or plan or purpose of God for your life, you may not experience the blessing. Doing what God did not ask you to do may attract calamity. Because when you are where God does not ask you to be, or you are doing what God does not want you to do, his, your security is not guaranteed. Your safety cannot be confirmed. Am I communicating at all? What was it that attracted the curses into the life of Adam and Eve? By do, doing what God did not ask them to do. By eating the fruit God did not ask them to eat. By taking what God did not ask them to take, they attracted curses into their lives. That was Adam and Eve. They ate the forbidden fruit. So, what brings the, the blessing? Purpose for living. Purpose for living. Understanding purpose for living brings the blessing. Number two, is principles of scripture. When you obey and live by scriptural principles, you are ushered into the world of the blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, all the way to verse 2. He said, and it shall come to pass if you shall diligently, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Inside the scripture is the package of the blessing. Principles of scripture. In everything, give thanks. That is a principle. He said, don't murmur, don't complain, don't grumble. When you are faced with situations, give thanks. That is a principle of scripture. And following the principles of scripture is behind the making of principalities among men. The, the scriptures. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is a principle. That is, when you wake up in the morning, before you start answering phone call, seek God first. When you see food, before you start eating, talk to God first. When money enters your hand, before you start doing things, place God first. That is a principle of scripture. He said, when you hacking, do what I say you should do. Don't just read it. Do it. Then, these blessings shall come upon you. Am I communicating at all? There are many who carry the Bible, but they don't know what the Bible carries. Neither do they do what the Bible said. So the struggle continues. Principles of scripture. You know, some of the things God says to us are so simple. Many people are looking for the complexity of things, but they are so very simple. And it is in that simplicity that we see possibility. In the simplicity of scripture is the possibility of God. Or are the possibilities of God. Someone say amen. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? So, number two is principles of scripture. Number three is purity of life. The purity of life which involves integrity attracts and establishes the blessing of God. You see, these things are practical and they are real. In the book of Psalm 24, verse 3, who 
shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place. I'm reading all the way to verse 5, verse 4. He who has clean hands, a pure heart, his soul has not lifted himself up unto vanity. He has not, is not lying and swearing. He has not sworn deceitfully. You know, there are people, they are lying and they are swearing. And in verse 5, say, that person that we just described in verse, in verse 4, pure heart, clean hands, is not lying and swearing. That is the man that shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That is the man that will receive the blessing of the Lord. Most Nigerians can never experience the blessing of God through blessings except there is a change in, in mentality and character. Because everybody is looking for who to dupe. Looking for who to cheat. Looking for money to make. Before somebody does what is, he is paid to do, he is looking for bribe from people. Righteousness is doorway to blessedness. Crookedness is the way to wretchedness. And those who try to make all that kind of crooked, dubious monies, it doesn't have any future. Am I still speaking this morning? Is there somebody angry with what I'm saying? Even inside the church, find a brother struggling to eat. Employ him in your place of work. He was struggling to see transport and to go to church. Suddenly you assisted him, gave him work. That is your offense. He now has a car. He's now supervisor in your, in, for, for you. Or he's now a manager. And this so-called manager now is trying to see how to close your business down. He didn't have money before. People you connected him to for, for your business sake is trying to divert them to himself. Take your seat. And many years ago, I got to learn that we don't, don't blame God. When you see the frustration of some people, don't blame God. He saw their heart and saw them ahead and said, leave this man there. Take your sin. You can be neatly blessed in Nigeria with a neat mindset and a neat character. Everything in this life is not all about money. He that has clean hands. Brother, doing business with brother, challenge. Sister, doing business with sister, challenge. That is why we see as if unbelieving the unbelieving world I, I see the unbelieving people have more people that appear in quote successful than the people in the christian world in the days of abraham he was the richest in his, in his generation in the days of isaac he was the wealthiest in the days of jacob he was the the, the, the biggest job he was the biggest in his time but today we are seeing that unbelievers are occupying top spot where there are believers reason is simple these unbelievers are following strictly the dictates of satan their father they go into the old court they do this they do that they or some just do the normal plain things but the church people are mixing the principles of god with the principles of the world they don't miss church and they don't miss bribe they don't miss church they don't miss corruption they don't miss church they don't miss cheating Are you following me? And so it is impossible. It is impossible to be blessed like that. 
Is this the kind of thing to preach on a Sunday morning? Yes. But you are going to be blessed. Please know for as long as you live, anything God does not give you does not add anything to your life. The only thing that adds something to your life is what God gives you. Any money, any resources, any favor that God is not doing for you is not a plus, it's a minus. Purity of life. What brings the blessing? Purpose of, for living, principles of scripture, purity of life, the purity of life, all right? The practice of covenant, number four. The practice of covenant. Purpose for living, principles of, the principles of scripture, the practice of covenant. There is a covenant that says, as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter shall not cease. And day and night shall not cease. That is, if there is somebody to give, there is a God to release. In Malachi chapter 2, okay, not Malachi, now let me take Genesis chapter 14 verse 18. At the place of Abraham's blessing, there was a release. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God which has delivered your enemies into, into your hand. And he gave him the tithes of all at the place of the tithing, at the place of the giving was the place of the blessing. Listen, your blessing is not guaranteed until your generosity towards God and his kingdom is confirmed. Blessing is not guaranteed until your generosity towards God and his kingdom is confirmed. He said, I will bless you and you will become a consumer. No. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. A blessing to God. A blessing to man. I want to make you a channel, not a depot. I want to make you a channel, not, not, not a container. I, I am not trying to make you a container of things. I want to make you a channel for things. Am I speaking to somebody here? A channel for the kingdom. A channel for the less privileged. Me, when money is stepping into my hands, I am thinking in terms of how many churches will this build? Do you understand? I'm sure we are going to reach a point very soon. Now, I was talking with one young man the other day, and um, there is a place where we are building a new church, where the Dunamis church, big church is being built, and it's going to be dedicated very soon. And the young man said, please, sir, in that dedication program that will involve the crusade in the town, he said the whole cost of that crusade, renting of the stadium, and every single thing that has to do with that program, every single thing, please let, let give us the opportunity to handle everything. Every single thing. Crusade. Every single thing. Everybody who will come for, 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 for ministration, they are trans airfare. Everything, every single thing, hotel, every single thing, renting of equipment, light, sound, every single thing, what, whatever is the cost, let us handle. I don't want the church to handle one naira. What's, yes, that's right. That is kingdom. That is kingdom prosperity. With purpose. He said one day we're going to fly somewhere and um, I think there was a challenge with um, the commercial air, 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 airline and we needed a schedule for the whole year. And if I do, I would like to 
take this one, this particular crusade that is holding in India or this one that is holding somewhere. Somebody can say what is the cost of tarring the road here or the road there or building this particular construction, this structure. We need to come to a point where we have gone beyond survivor. Survivor means I, I thank God I just got a car. Thank God I just got a house. Thank God I just got a visa. That is normal survivor. Am I communicating? Where your heart is thinking massively. Where you are thinking like in, be, be, before 2020 is over, I should have been able to put up to five church buildings from foundation to roofing for the sake of the kingdom. I should be involved in mission work. I should be involved in this and that. Thinking in that sense. Not in the terms of how much can I, how much money can I get so I can travel abroad. You think far, think high, think big for the kingdom. And it enters your hands. In the course of this construction, every time money enters my hand, in my mind already I know where it's going. Oh wow, thank you God for this massive amount. This one is going to this, to this one, to this aspect straight. This is going here straight. This is going there straight. One of our church locations texted me, uh, emailed me last night. Cody, say good morning, sir. Don't you know me? I say, I don't know you. And then my wife say, oh, you don't know her? She is on our scholarship. She and her sister. This one is reading engineering. The other, the other one is reading English. Both of them are on my personal scholarship. They don't, they, no father to sponsor them. We are sponsoring them through the university and I am not aware. I don't even know their faces. When that one, when she graduated, she came back to Abuja here and brought her first fruit. Thank you for sponsoring me through school. I am now working in so-and-so bank. Take your seat. The things we are saying are not things that we are, it's not a matter of telling people to do things. It's a matter of what you are doing with your own life. What you are doing with your own life. By April or so this year, between March and April, one of the rural churches where my God is helping us to build in one of the villages there, we are going to go and dedicate it. Probably with a crusade. And then that kind of schedule goes on and on. And in so doing, you can be sure that you will never, you can never be stranded, your hand can never be empty. The practice of the covenant is number four. Number five is partnership with God. That is walking with God as well as walking for God. You are walking with God. You are walking for God. It is doorway to the blessing. Walking with God, walking for God is doorway to to the blessing. Walking with God, walking for God. Exodus chapter 23 verse 25. But ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. He shall bless your bread and your water. He shall bless your bread and your water and take sickness away from the middle of you from the midst of you he shall bless your bread and your water he said something to me yesterday and i will never forget he said if you make god the center of your life he will make your life the center of the blessing <laughs> the blessing finally the possession of the light of faith. The possession of the light of faith. There are scriptures that you see. The kind of revelation you see out of it will shift your blessing. Just shift your life. You see? Just shift your life. What was it that shifted Peter? Light. Matthew chapter 16 verse 13 all the way to verse 19. The Bible says that when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea in Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, 
whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Others say you are Elijah. Others say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And, and then he said unto them, but whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. Revelation. The son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Blessed art thou. Why? Because you saw light. The weight of light you see affects the weight of the blessing you experience. Ask God to open your eyes to see things out of scripture you never saw before. They will connect you with resources you never saw before. The weight of light you see out of scripture affects the weight of your blessing. Men of faith like Kenneth Copeland and like God's servant Bishop David Oedipo or our Roberts, Kenneth E.A. Hagen, they were men who were unusually insightful in God's, in God's word. And the insight of scripture produced for them blessings that the world couldn't understand. Someone like Kenneth Copeland, I hear he has given out free of charge about 27 aircrafts. As at the last time I heard, that is, this is my gift to you. Not cow, not bicycle. Even if it is bicycle, how many bicycles have we given to people before? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Something is happening to somebody already. How many of you see yourself blessed? You know, so when we accept responsibilities, we step into possibilities. See, these are responsibilities for the blessing. When you are, the things you have heard now, go over them. That is, what do you want me, am I doing what I am meant to be doing with my life? Am I following scriptural principle? Am I following the path of purity and integrity? Or am I following the Nigerian crooked ways of doing things? Am I practicing the covenant or am I just a consumer? Am I in partnership with God? Am I in possession of light? They affect the blessing. But today, I see blessings released upon somebody. Stand on your feet in a shout of praise. Anybody has been blessed today, give, it, give the Lord a louder shout of praise. Loud most shout of praise. Loud most shout of praise. Mighty, 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 mighty God. Lift your hands and let's honor God and let's worship him. Let's honor God, let's worship him. Let's give him the praise. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him the adoration. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we glorify you. Thank you.